JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for June the 25th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against all the other G10 currencies on Wednesday and during the Asian morning Thursday. It most outperformed NOC, AUD and SEC in that order, while it decked out the least gains versus CHF and uh, JPY. The dollar, the franc and the yen were the main winners, which uh, combined with the fact that uh, the Aussie was among the main losers, suggests uh, that uh, the that uh, trading switched to risk off yesterday. Indeed, uh, major EU and US uh, stock indices were, were a sea of red yesterday with the negative investor morale rolling into the Asian session today. Both Japan's Nikkei 225 and South Korea's KOSPI slid 1.18 and 1.90% uh, respectively. China's and Hong Kong's uh, markets were closed uh, for holiday. It seems that uh, those who bet on a quick uh, economic recovery due to the loosening of uh, the coronavirus-related li restrictions around the globe have took a step back, allowing those who are concerned over a second wave of global infections to take charge. This may have been due to another accel acceleration in infected cases, with uh, the daily number getting closer to its record high hit on Friday. Three U.S. states reported uh, record uh, increases, while governors of uh, New York, N New Jersey and Connecticut uh, ordered travelers from nine other states to quarantine for two weeks on arrival. On top of that, what may have added to fears uh, was uh, the fact that the IMF downgraded its projections with regards to a global economic uh, contraction this year. It now expects global output to shrink 4.9% instead of 3% as uh, forecast in April. Headlines that uh, the US is considering uh, a 3.1 uh, uh, billion US dollars worth of uh, new tariffs on products uh, from France from France, Germany, the UK and Spain may have also weighed on uh, the broader market sentiment. Now as for our view, although we still see decent chances for sentiment to improve as, uh, as uh, most nations around the globe continue to loosen lockdown measures, the increasing fears over the second uh, virus wave and the technical picture in several stock indices and other sentiment gauges like uh, Aussie dollar and Aussie yen make us uh, step back to the sidelines for now. Despite the Nasdaq hitting a fresh record high on Tuesday before retreating yesterday, several other indices like the Dow have formed a higher, uh, a lower high, while uh, while, cur while currency pairs like uh, like the Aussie dollar uh, that track the broader the broader investor morale point to indecisive activity through conso through consolidative patterns. Uh, with all that in mind, uh, we prefer to wait for clearer signals that the latest risk recovery is set to continue, while in order to start considering the bearish case again, we would, uh, we would like to see more lockdown measures being reintroduced worldwide, something that could result in a second hit to the global economy. Now, as uh, for today's events, during the European morning, we get the minutes from the latest ECB meeting, where officials decided to increase their pandemic emergency purchase program to a total of 1,315 billion euros and remained willing to adjust all of uh, their instruments as appropriate. We will dig into the minutes uh, for discussion over the economic outlook and how likely another stimulus expansion is. 
Later in the day, the final US GDP for the first quarter is coming out, and it is expected to confirm its second estimate, namely that the US economy contracted 5% quarter-over-quarter seasonally adjusted rate. Even if we get a smaller revision, we expect this release to pass unnoticed, as we already have models suggesting how the economy has been performing during the second quarter. The Atlanta Fed GDP now model suggests that in the second quarter the economy slammed 45.5%, while the New York now cast uh, points to a minus 19% uh, growth rate. At its latest gathering, the FOMC kept interest rates unchanged and noted that they will continue to increase purchases of um, bond and mortgage-backed securities, at least at the current pace, something suggesting that purchases can accelerate, in, can accelerate again if deemed necessary. What's more, last week they announced tweaks to their bond purchases, widening the range of eligible assets to include all US corporate bonds. Thus, such growth rates for the second quarter may increase the chances for the Fed to do more. After all, when testifying before Congress, Fed Chair Powell himself said that there is a reasonable probability that more policy support would be needed. Durable goods orders for May and the initial jobless claims for last week uh, are also coming out. Headline orders are expected to rebound 10.6% month over month after a 17.7% slide in um, in April, while the core rate is expected to have risen to 2.1% month over month from minus 7.7%. Initial jobless claims are expected to have slowed to 1.3 million from 1.51 million a week before. As for tonight, during the Asian Morning Friday, Japan's Tokyo CPIs for June are due to be released. No forecast is available for the headline rate, while the core one is anticipated to have held steady to 0.2% year over year. We also have uh, five speakers on today's agenda, ECB Executive Board members uh, Isabel Schnabel and Yves uh, Mersch, Dallas Fed President Robert Kaplan, Cleveland Fed President L Loretta Mester, and Bank of England Chief Economist Andy Haldane. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of uh, the week uh, much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.